In this lecture, we will discuss the draft consensus protocol, which is different from the Paxos protocol. So, it, it is different in many senses. So, Paxos is a far more complex protocol. So, draft is substantially simpler. So, let's look at the main features of raft so the primary motivation of creating raft was that paxos is perceived to be too complex and uh, so that uh, that's the reason when paxos is taught typically a simple version of the protocol is taught which is called a single decree consensus which essentially means we are agreeing on a single value not on a list of values the problem is that most of the time we don't want to agree on a single value but rather we want to agree on a series of values such that in any distributed system uh, different nodes will apply the same set of values, same set of changes, one after the other on their state machines. So, this is primarily, so Paxos can do it. So, the full version of the Paxos protocol can do it. But since it is complex, a simpler protocol was devised, which is easy to understand, debug, and verify. The main advantages are of the raft consensus protocol are understandability, it is simple. It is naturally tailored towards a list of values, not just a single value, and it is easy to implement. The overview. So the key idea here is that we have a replicated state machine model, which means that each server maintains a state machine. So we essentially have multiple servers. And uh, so let's say, you know, anything like, uh, providing a web page or uh, checking email. So instead of one email server, we have multiple email servers. Each of them has exactly the same state machine, the same finite state machine. So clients send a request to the servers. So what a dispatcher does, a dispatcher is that it replicates the same, so the same request is replicated to all the servers all of them apply the client's request or the client command to the state machines and so since you know we can have a series of commands from different clients there is a need to create a list of commands that are seen by all the servers and there needs to be complete agreement a complete consensus on this list such that they can be applied in the same order otherwise we can have interesting violations in consistency so let's say for example there are two commands the first command is to read an email the second is to delete an email so if let's say the read comes here first and then the delete it's fine we first read the contents and then we delete the email but it is possible that another server unless we do something might say delete first and then the read that is an issue because in this case uh, the mail will be deleted first and the read will fail and this is not something that we want hence we want all the servers to see the same set of commands in the same order so this of course is a consensus problem and this is a multiple degree instead of a single degree it's like a list consensus and where there are multiple orders that are given out and this of course is hard to do in Paxos, so we that's the reason we would typically use raft and we will also find when we study blockchain and bitcoin and all of these technologies that raft is one of the key protocols behind ibm's well uh, ibm led uh, hyperledger fabric which is a very very common blockchain that is used but we'll have a later lecture on blockchains where we will discuss this in great detail but the important point that needs to be kept in mind is that raft is one of the key foundational technologies of hyperledger like blockchain systems so the idea here is that we first elect a leader the leader then accepts the requests from the clients 
it replicates them at the servers as we just saw then it informs the clients when they can process uh, the message in consensus order uh, so uh, i'm sorry it'll inform not the clients the servers uh, when they can uh, process the, uh, the all the messages in consensus order and such that all of them see the same set of messages in the same order so what we do is that we have a so we divide time as follows we have a leader then the leader maintains his leadership for a period of time then if the leader crashes we elect a new leader and again the leader does its role so time is thus divided into what we call terms Let us now look at some of the key safety properties that we need to ensure in the raft algorithm. So the first is election safety, which means that at any point in time, we have at the most one leader. Or in other words, what it means is that in each term, we will have at the most one leader it will never be the case that we have two simultaneous leaders, two leaders at the same time. The second is, so this is a standard approach in distributed systems, that we have an append only log. So log is treated as something like a array that just keeps growing. So each of the log entries has an index, which is just an increasing sequence of numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then we have a set of terms. So pretty much every entry that was added in a given term has that term ID. So we can say that the first three entries are in term one, the second, set of four entries are in term two and so on. So the leader particularly never overrides or deletes any entry in the log. It only appends new entries. So the log only keeps increasing this way. Entries are never deleted or they are never overwritten by the leader. So this is not true for followers, but at least for the leader, this is the case. Then we will come at two of the most important properties that are log matching and leader completeness. So log matching basically means that if we consider two logs, so uh, the leader maintains a log, all the followers maintain a log, everybody maintains a log. So we want that till some point the logs are exactly identical. So this is the consensus that is a part of raft. So the point to which the logs are identical. So let's say that till point seven, the logs are identical. Then uh, what we can do is the moment we are sure of that, all of these entries can be passed on or applied to the state machines. So what the log matching property says that if two logs contain the same entry at a given index and term, so let's say uh, index the entry with index 7, it should have the term T2 and the same contents if that's the case, then the logs have to be identical till that index, which means that if this index is the same, the seventh index is the same, even all, all the entries before it, which means all the entries in the indices 1 to 6, they also need to be the same. So this is the log matching property and we will see that uh, the algorithm explicitly ensures this. The other important property which we actually need to prove at the end uh, is the leader completeness property, which means that if an entry is committed in a given term, so let me just explain what it means to commit an entry. So to commit an entry basically means to ensure uh, that the entire log till that entry. So let's say we want to commit entry number seven. 
uh, all the entries till 7 have been successfully replicated across all the servers or a majority of the servers. So at that, that point, we explicitly commit the entries, which basically means we tell all the servers that entries from 1 to 7 can be shown to their state machine, can be applied to their state machine. This process is called committing. So if an entry is committed in a given term, it will be present in the logs of leaders of successive terms, which means that if a new term begins, a current leader crashes and a new leader is elected and a new term begins, it need not have the uncommitted entries of the previous leader, but it definitely has to have the committed entries of all the previous leaders. So this ensures that the log grows in a certain way and any change that is applied to a finite state machine <coughs> that is correctly applied. Otherwise, what would happen if we don't have this property that uh, the leader of T2 would apply an entry and then T3 will not find it. So then from the leader 3 uh, who, who owns the term T3 from his point of view, this entry should not have been applied to the finite state machine and that should never be the case. So that would cause a correctness issue. Hence the leader completeness property is required. So then we come to state machine safety, which kind of follows from the rest. So if a server has applied a log entry to a state machine, then all servers will apply the same entry at the same log index. So this also follows from the notion of the way we create the logs and the way we create uh, and the leader completeness property and the way we commit the entries. So the state machine safety property naturally follows from the first four. So we will not prove this separately. We will essentially uh, look at the log matching and the leader completeness property because they are sufficient to uh, ensure uh, the rest given these assumptions and the rest of the property. So this is the way that a raft cluster looks like. We have uh, all the servers start in the follower state. Then um, in the follower state, once the servers time out, uh, they start an election. So every time an election is started, we increment the term number. So then the servers become candidates and uh, they request for votes from the rest of the servers. So what essentially happens uh, is that one server which is a candidate, it will send a vote request a message to the rest of the servers. So if it gets votes from a majority of servers, it is sure that it can be the leader. Otherwise, what happens if there is a split vote, which means nobody is able to garner a majority. In that case, we increment the term number and start a new election. When a server is a candidate, if it discovers that a leader has already been elected, which means the term has uh, been incremented and there is a new leader. So it relegates itself to the follower state which is essentially this part. And it is furthermore possible that a leader actually crashes and wakes up a long time later just to find that the term has been incremented and a new leader <coughs> has been elected. So in this case also, the old leader realizes it's not the leader anymore. So it goes back to being a follower. So a raft cluster thus has the it uh, typically has five servers or more, right, not less. And uh, so the followers become candidates. So candidate is a temporary state. So follower and leader, uh, these are stable states. But the candidate uh, <coughs> state is a temporary state. And so followers become candidates, still a leader is elected, then they become followers once again. If the leader finds another leader, of course, with a higher term ID, as we uh, discussed over here, it becomes a follower once again. 
so we are dividing time into terms so the a term begins with a leader election we have a new leader subsequently normal operation commences in the normal operation uh, clients send messages to servers they are replicated our consensus algorithm runs uh, then uh, it is possible that the leader crashes so what happens is a new leader is elected <clears throat> subsequently normal operation commences and then again we have one more election once the leader for term 2 crashes so in term 3 it is possible that no leader could be elected because of split votes so in that case we'll have a timeout we will increment the term number and uh, we will then elect one more leader so note that this is a probabilistic process it's not guaranteed to terminate and this is one of the cases uh, where uh, so so we know that in an asynchronous system because of the flp result it is possible that we you know we will never achieve a consensus so this means that any protocol uh, any consensus protocol in an asynchronous system has to have a set of events where consensus is not possible and this is one such case where we will simply not be able to elect a leader so now uh, what happens over here is that so let's assume we have a period of split votes and then we have a new leader and regular uh, execution commences so each server stores a current term number and the term number is attached to every message this is required uh, such that uh, everybody knows uh, what's the term and who's the leader so it is possible that you know servers uh, who are either followers or candidates or leaders would crash and recover so they would use a term number to find out uh, about the staleness uh, of messages so if a server with a lower term number sends a message to a server with a higher term number then it means that clearly the server with a lower term number is not aware of the changes that have happened when it was in the crash state so in this case the latter which is the server with the higher term number rejects the message drops the message in the reverse case if a server with a higher term number uh, so let's say a server with a higher term sends a message to a server with a lower term number then the latter which is this server will just upgrade its term furthermore if a candidate or leader discover that the term is still that their term is still which means that they are getting a message from another server with a higher term number they will realize that maybe they have crashed and then they have recovered or there was some partition in the network something like that has happened so they will move to the follower state which we have described in the previous slide now let's come to the details so all the servers as we just mentioned start in the follower state they periodically get messages from the leader which are heartbeat messages each heartbeat message definitely contains the term and the leader id so they always know who the leader is and what is the current term and uh, they use this to figure out if a message is stale or not so if a server does not get a heartbeat for a pre-specified duration this essentially means that maybe the leader has crashed so what it does is that it times out and it begins the process of electing a new leader it becomes a candidate itself and begins the process of electing a new leader so now let's see uh, what happens while beginning an election so for beginning an election uh, the server increments its current term uh, so this is required uh, so every election uh, be it successful or unsuccessful has to happen with a new term and it transitions to the candidate state it votes for itself and it sends a request vote message to the rest of the servers 
uh, let us look at the three possible outcomes and see uh, what uh, will happen in each of these cases. So let's say it wins the election. So if it wins the election, that is great. So which means that each server, a majority of servers vote for it. So kindly note that in an election, each server votes for only one candidate in a given term. So that is important. And uh, uh, so, so it basically means that uh, in a given term, uh, the server will only vote for a single candidate. And uh, so the candidate is also not allowed to vote for, so see, so a double voting is not allowed and that also includes the candidate voting for itself, that also is not allowed in a given term. The leader especially uh, needs to get a vote from a majority of servers, so this is required and this is where we can have a never ending cycle. So then uh, the leader begins its term and sends heartbeat messages to the rest of the servers. So with the heartbeat message, what do the rest of, us, rest of the servers get? They definitely get the term ID, the new term ID and the leader ID. Now let's look at the second scenario. So let us say that, you know, it uh, either didn't participate in the election or it did not win. But after that, it either gets a heartbeat message or a regular append entries, append entries to the log message from a server. Say the term is greater than or equal to the current term. It means that the new server is the leader. So we recognize the other server as the leader. And the candidates will transition to the follower state, which we have uh, been describing. That, you know, just in case it's not able to win, or before, sometime in the middle of the election, it gets a message with a higher term number. It should convince itself uh, that it has lost the election. And so it will just recognize the new leader and transition to the follower state. Uh, if that is not the case, it's a stale message. We just ignore the message. So let's consider this case where uh, no leader is elected, we have split votes. So what happens is that in this case, the candidate will time out, mainly because it's not getting enough votes, and it will start a new election, a new round of elections. So one way, so we can always argue that, look, all the candidates start, then they don't get enough votes, then they time out, again they start, again they don't get enough votes, so on and so forth. So, it, by this process, we never achieve a leader. Uh, we, we, we never, no, nobody ever wins the election. So, to solve that, the nodes have a randomized timeout, which means that for random periods, the nodes kind of sleep and, uh, you know, don't uh, try to elect themselves leaders. So, because of this randomized timeout, what happens is that uh, we are trying to minimize the the contention, trying to minimize the overlaps uh, when uh, the leader ele elections will happen. So, if the randomized timeout is, is if this is an, if this is a function that can kind of uh, separate the leader election periods, it is possible that we will have only a few servers or maybe just one or two that are vying to be the leader at a given point in time. So, we can then uh, assure them a majority, probabilistically, of course. So, this kind of minimizes the chances of having split votes. Now, let us consider the fact. So, now we have elected a leader. We have taken care of uh, the split votes issue. So, let us look at log replication. How is it that uh, we achieve consensus in the stored logs? So, after a leader has been elected, the clients uh, send it requests. The leader sends append entries messages. 
to the rest of the servers and uh, so these uh, servers then append the entries so we will see in a second how it happens so let us look at the structure of a log so the log is maintained by the leader and all the servers so it is a simple list as we said where each of them has an index and a term so this is the index and of course we have a term where multiple contiguous indi uh, indices will have the same term and then each entry stores a command uh, so uh, the important operative parts are the index the term and the command now to commit an entry a log entry is committed once the leader has replicated it on the majority of servers so the majority of servers the entry has to be replicated with the same index and term in the, in the majority of the servers so which means that in this case entry number 4 has to be present with the same command in the majority of the servers that is when we say that the entry is committed and if the entry is committed this commits all the preceding entries as well so all the entries before this are committed so if we would see we had a correctness condition uh, which is the leader complete uh, so, so, sorry the log matching condition that if essentially they match at one point they will match at all the previous points so because of log matching we need to ensure that this uh, genuinely happens uh, so the leader then what the leader would do so so the commit is associated with a state so the state in this case is the leader commits entry 4 well when will it commit entry 4 when entry when the entry with index 4 is present uh, in the logs of a majority of servers with the same index and the same term so to commit the leader has a commit index and internal variable so it just sets that to 4 which means that all the entries 1 2 3 4 are committed so any message that the leader sends uh, this will include the highest committed index in the message which means it will include so any server that gets the message it will know that the entries 1 to 4 are committed and these entries then can be applied to its finite state machine so once the followers see the message they commit the corresponding entries one after the other uh, one after the other in the order in which they are stored in the log so of course let's say they have applied uh, the commands at indices 1 and 2 then they will now apply the command at indices 3 and 4 but not 5 right that's important uh, not the one at 5 so let us now look at the log matching property so the key safety properties that we have discussed out of them the two important properties are the log matching property and the leader completeness property so the log matching property let us break it into two sub conditions s1 and s2 so if two entries in different logs have the same index and term they store the same command this is the first property second if two separate logs have the same index and term all the preceding entries of the logs are identical so let's take a look at these three logs so uh, here uh, the color and uh, this entry over here is the term number and the indices are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So the first row is the log of the leader. The second and third rows are the logs of the followers respectively. So now what we get to see is that for the leader there are three terms. So let's first consider the second row which is follower 1. So in this case, if we consider term 3 index 5, the entries are the same. And uh, so from the first property S1, if the index and the term match, they have to have the same command, which they actually do. 
both are setting y to 5 and by s2 if two separate logs have the same index and term all the preceding entries of the logs are identical which in this case holds true that all the preceding entries which are entries 1 2 3 and 4 are identical now let us consider the log for uh, the second following so in this case the first four entries are identical but the fifth entry for index 5 it has a different term number so for index 5 uh, the term number should be 3 it is 2 so this entry is unmatched given the fact that this entry is unmatched so uh, we will say that uh, this log is an unmatched log and uh, so since so it as per the log matching property uh, we can say that this log is not acceptable to us right so this is an unmatched state whereas uh, all the logs are matching till the first four entries so to ensure property s1 that the same index term tuple uh, leads to the same command what the leader does is it creates at most one entry at a given index in it a given index in a certain term so which basically means that you know the array is considered a monotonically increasing array and uh, for a uh, for a given term so, so the index keeps on increasing so essentially what the leader would do is that if the log is full till let's say the nth index it would add an entry at the n plus 1th index and also attach its term number along with it And given the fact that this entry is being replicated, uh, sorry, uh, n and n plus 1 come here. Given the fact that this entry is being replicated, all the replicated logs would also have the same command at the same index. Right? Otherwise, the log matching property will not hold and we want it to hold. And the way that we would actually do that is that the leader will essentially add the entry in its own log and then broadcast that entry in an append entries message with the index and all the followers have to insert it at that index only so that ensures property s1 next let's consider property s2 that for the same index term uh, tuple which means that if two logs at the same index are the same term all the previous entries are going to match so to ensure this what the leader does is that along with an append entries message the leader sends the index and term of the previous entry in its log what would that translate to here is that let's say this is the current entry for which the leader is adding a command for the previous entry so for for doing this it would create an append entries message and in the append entries message it would essentially add if this is the command it will add this command with the index and the term it will also send the index and the term of the previous entry so the advantage of this is that if the follower does not find the previous entry in its log with a matching index term it refuses to accept the message right and if it accepts the message it means that the previous entry matches so the current entry will also match so this ensures the log matching property essentially by induction that is why because the base case is that the logs are empty so the logs are the same across all the servers and the induction case is that only if the previous entry matches how does it match because the previous entry is sent along with every append entries message only if that uh, matches we add a new entry otherwise the follower refuses to accept the message so we will see what happens in this case right so so essentially this refuses this case has to be understood but if it does accept the message then the logs match so essentially our protocol is designed in such a way that properties s1 and s2 which are sub properties of the log matching property they continue to hold if a message is accepted it is possible that because of crashes the followers logs will diverge 
So it is possible that, you know, if this is the leader's log and this is the follower's log, it might match till this point. After that, there might be a divergence. So the divergence has to be fixed. So we saw one example of the divergence over here, which was not an acceptable entry. So the divergence has to be fixed. The way that Raft would do it is that it would force followers to replicate the leader's logs. So this fixes the divergence. So the leader is assumed to be always correct and the followers simply replicate the leader's logs. So this kills the divergence. Now let us try to reconcile the log entries. So consider a log over here with three terms and seven indices. Uh, the leader maintains a next index pointer for each follower. What this essentially means that uh, uh, it basically maintains uh, the degree of uh, uh, how much the logs of a follower match with the leader. So let me explain. So the next index pointer is initialized to be equal to the index of the last entry in the leader's log plus one. So if this is the leader's log over here with seven entries, then the last entry plus one is eight. So it is assumed by the leader that all the followers are matching logs. And the next index at which they will insert an entry is actually index number eight. Now followers might indicate a divergence after receiving a message from the leader. So why would that be? Well, the reason that would be the case when uh, the follower refuses to accept the message from the leader because the previous entry does not match. So in this case, what would happen is that the leader will be aware that a given follower, there is a divergence. So in this case, the leader would send entry number eight, but follower would say that, look, entry number seven doesn't match. So the leader in this case will decrement the next index pointer and try again. Ultimately, the logs will match, right? So ultimately, the logs will match at some point. So let's say they will match at this point till point four. So one thing that the leader is sure is that the follower, the first four entries match. After that, of course, things diverge. Then when the logs match, what the follower will do is that it will append all the remaining entries from the leader's log, which are these three entries, five, six, and seven. So this ensures that the follower and the leader will ultimately come in sync. But the way that this will happen is that the follower first has to indicate a divergence and the follower has to refuse messages. So the leader will continue to decrement the next index pointer it will then wait till the logs match and after that the follower will just copy the rest of the log entries from the leader so the leader never overwrites and never deletes entries in its own log it only continues to append them so given that we have discussed this let us discuss more of the safety properties so the next property, so we have already discussed log matching. We have already discussed how the logs are reconciled if we discover a divergence. So that also we have discussed. So next, let us discuss the leader completeness property. So the leader completeness property is like this, that the leaders will keep changing because of process crashes. So any kind of a consensus algorithm does take crashes into account so the leaders will keep changing so however the new leader should have all the log entries of the old leader so the new leader whoever is elected will have is expected to have all the log entries of the old leader otherwise all the committed log entries right so i should you know you uh, you should it should be the committed log entries of the old leader if that is not the case, there is a problem. So we add an election restriction, which is that a candidate cannot win an election unless its log 
contains all the committed entries. So, so basically what is the idea? The idea is that look, the leader is over here. The leader keeps on sending messages to each of the servers. Once the leader is dead, one of the servers needs to elect it a leader, but the server over here can only stand in an election only if it has all the committed entries of the old leader. So this is a crucial and critical election restriction that we put to ensure that servers whose entries are not up to date do not stand in the election. So the request vote message includes information about the candidate's log, particularly the index of the last committed entry, the index of the entry that was committed the last time. So the candidate's log should at least be as up to date as the log of the voter, right? So, so how did the leader commit an entry? The leader committed an entry because it was there with the majority of the voters. So whenever, let's say this candidate, this server becomes a candidate, it sends a request vote message to the rest too. They will see if their log is more up to date as compared to this or not. So the candidate's log, which is, if this is the candidate, should at least be as up to date as the voters. Only then will the election go through. So this, uh, so the basic insight of this is that we want to ensure that whatever the leader has committed is present in the logs of the next leader, right? Is at least is present in the logs of the next successful candidate. And since leaders only come out of candidates, we are ensuring the leader completeness property via this. So what is the up-to-date check? Well, the up-to-date check is we check the last entries. The log with the higher term is more up to date. Well, that is common sense. That the log with the higher term means it has seen more of uh, more leaders uh, come and commit their entries. So the one with the higher term is clearly more up to date. And if the terms are the same, the log with more entries is more up to date. So we will connect this with the number of committed entries later in the proof. But this is our up to date check that uh, what we do is that we check the last entries of the logs and uh, clearly the winner in this case is the one with the higher term and if the terms are the same then the log with more entries is more up to date we can have several corner cases when it comes to leaders crashing and then recovering so let us consider a few such cases there is an example in the paper so the uh, viewer should be convinced of the fact that most consensus protocols are very hard to design, particularly if the leader crashes, then uh, there are many, many race conditions, many, many corner cases which need to be handled. It is typically not possible to manually verify all of them. That's the reason many of these protocols are actually verified by automated uh, checkers, automated verification engines that actually do a process of automated verification and go through hundreds of these corner cases and verify that for each of them, the protocol works correctly. So let us uh, give a brief overview of what is it that can happen. So assume a leader crashes. So let's say it crashes before committing an entry E. So what committing an entry basically means here, so this is just not a single phase. So this is actually a pretty loaded term. So what the leader does, is that it sends an append entries to all the servers only when they accept the message is it actually sure that uh, they have actually added it to the log and when it gets uh, an acknowledgement or does not get a refusal from a majority of the servers it is sure that the majority of the servers have the entry in their log and at that point the leader updates the last commit entry and uh, then uh, the entry is sent uh, and, and then every subsequent message has the last commit uh, entry uh, has the has the value of the last commit so once the last commit is sent to the server it is also sure that the leader has committed a given entry 
So this process is kind of implicit in RAFT and it is not that the leader commits an entry and announces it, it happens implicitly. And this is a rather complex aspect of the protocol, which is hard to appreciate, but there is an example and a section in the paper. Uh, I would request the viewers to take a look at it. So let me give an overview of what exactly it says. So let's say before it commits an entry, which means that before uh, it has sent it to all the servers and it has gotten acknowledgements that the entry has been added, the leader fails, it crashes. So in this case, a new leader is elected. This leader's log clearly has to be as up to date as a majority of the servers. Where so up to date is defined the way we have defined, either the last entry has a higher term or the last entry has this, the same term ID, but the leader just has more greater than or equal to the leader size of the log is at least as large as uh, the size of the voter. So let us say it has the entry E in its log, the new leader. So what will happen is since the new leader does not delete or overwrite any entries, in the normal course of operation, it will send the, the entry E to the rest of the servers that do not have it. So this is what is going to happen in the normal course of operation. So the rest of the servers will have the entry. E. It is also possible, so, so this is one of the cases where this could be safely handled. But in general, if this happens in the normal course of operation, it's fine. But in general, if there is an entry from a previous term that is uncommitted, so for the sake of simplicity, what Raft does uh, is that it does not um, overwrite it, it does not commit it. If the leader has the entry in its log, it will naturally propagate to the rest of the servers. If it doesn't have the entry, it does not automatically commit it. And this is where simplicity is preferred, that we do not automatically commit entries from previous terms, right? So this is not an automatic process, right? Uh, if it does happen in the course of this leader's uh, operation, it's fine. Otherwise, it does not happen otherwise. If the follower or the candidate crashes, well, that's an easy situation to manage. So Raft keeps trying to send request vote and append entries messages to all the crashed followers and candidates. And all of Raft's messages are idempotent. What that means is that there is no harm if multiple copies of the same message are sent to the same server. So the request vote messages can be sent. It's okay. Append entries messages can also be sent. And uh, since uh, the same message can be sent any number of times, there is no issue. For example, if the append entries message is sent twice or thrice, it doesn't matter. If it has been added to the log once, it will not be added a second time. So, of course, there are some timing requirements. The time it takes to broadcast a message, for example, has to be less than the timeout time of an election. That, that is very clear because if it times out before that, uh, then we will just be doing broadcast after broadcast. And the election timeout time has to be much lower than the mean time between failures because if that is not the case, then we will actually fail rather often as compared to the timeout and the election will never conclude. So some typical examples that are there in the paper is that the broadcast time is between 0.5 and 20 milliseconds. An election timeout is between 10 milliseconds and 500 milliseconds. So now let us provide a quick uh, proof of safety of the leader completeness property. So we have already described the log matching uh, property. So that is easy. It happens by induction. That is the way that the two sub properties S1 and S2 are actually handled. So let us now discuss the leader completeness property, how uh, we would actually prove it uh, in the next uh, two or three slides. So let us say that in term T, the leader of term T, leader T, commits an entry E. So at a later term U, leader U does not store the entry, so the, or does not have the entry. So this would uh, violate the leader completeness property. 
and this is where we want to prove a contradiction we want to say that this situation will not happen so let us consider the smallest such term u where u is greater than t where the entry e is absent in u is absent in the logs of u so the this will only happen if e is absent from u's logs at the time of its election so when e, u was elected right so it did not have the entry e so hence even after the election it does not have the entry e because the process of election per se does not add an entry to the logs this means that there must be some server s that accepted e which was sent by leader t and that also voted for leader u why because essentially commit requires a majority and uh, election requires a majority so there has to be an intersection a non zero intersection and let some server s be in that intersection so that must have accepted as well as voted so this means that since u is the least such u it's the minimum uh, we have taken the smallest such u s still had e when it voted for leader u this is because all the intervening leaders had e in their logs which is by assumption so the server s still had e right it was not removed so at the time of voting leader u's log must have been up to date and this means it must have been up to date as compared to the logs of s this further means that uh, we must do an up to date check which means that if they have had the same last term then the log of leader u must have been longer it and it must have contained e right if it was longer it must have contained e which uh, so so this cannot be the case so if that is not the case that only the other case is possible which is that e leader u's last log and log term must have been larger than the voters which in this case is s so the term of the last entry must have been larger than the term of the voters logs last entry so let's see okay, is this possible so this is not possible the reason is like this the earlier leader that created leader use last log entry must have had e in its log that is an assumption so by the log matching property leader use log must also contain e so it is important we go through this particular thing once again so let us explain this once again so uh, so if you would recall the leader completeness property basically says that look uh, if a given entry has been committed by a previous leader it is there in the logs of all successive leaders so we said let this not be the case let us derive a contradiction so let's say some later leader u uh, so some later term u whose uh, leader is leader u where u is greater than t let it not have a given entry if it doesn't have a given entry it would have not had that entry at the time of voting as well and this means that uh, you know so, so this means that there must have been some server s that accepted e and also voted for leader u so so for this server s let's try to see what would have happened and derive a contradiction so what would have happened is that the server s would have still had e at the time of voting and uh, the leader u's log would have been up to date this means that if u and uh, so if th this means that if leader u and s have the same last term so in their logs if they are the same last term we consider their logs so if both of them have the same last term then it must be the case that leader u just has a longer log which means it has more entries right at least uh, in a, which it has greater than equal to zero extra entries so then this means 
uh, that uh, from the log matching property, if E is somewhere in here, E has to be in the same position over here, right? So, so there is no other option. Right, so 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 basically, the, since there is no other option, this case is precluded. So this could not have led to the divergence. So what could have led to the divergence is that the leader used last term must have been larger than the voters last term. So if I were to draw the logs once again, So what would have happened is that let's say their last terms, if the term of this is T1 and the term of this is T2, then T1 must have been greater than or equal to T2. So th this would have made the leader use logs more up to date. So let's understand what would have happened. The earlier leader, so sorry, there will be no comma over here. So the earlier leader that created leader use last log entry. So let this be the last log entry of leader use. What would have happened? Well, what would have happened is that the earlier leader would have had E in its log. So that is by the assumption uh, because we are assuming the minimum U. The earlier leader that created the log for created the last log entry for leader U. Right. So basically what happens? This is where the last log entry ends and then the, the earlier leader crashes. And this is, you know, where leader U becomes the leader and uh, its term starts. So the earlier guy who created this entry must have had E in its log and then leader U took it from there. So what would have happened is that uh, because of the log matching property given that you know both the logs actually match, uh, the all the previous entries would have matched which you have already ensured by induction which means that just at the time of voting leader u would have had e in its logs. So since the leader u will subsequently not delete an entry, it will continue to have e. Hence, we have a contradiction in both the cases and thus the leader completeness property holds. So it is important that the viewer goes through this argument several times and appreciates all of its nuances. So this is reasonably complicated to uh, visualize and explain. So that's why the viewer needs to go through the proof in the paper several times. A few miscellaneous issues. So the first is that servers can get added or deleted from the raft cluster. So a traditional approach would be to stall the entire system, copy all the logs from the new configuration to the old configuration and restart the system. Raft does this without any downtime. So what raft does is that if the servers are supposed to change, it creates something called a joint consensus mechanism, which is a, uh, which is kind of like having two leaders at the same time who are working in unison. So the leader receives, uh, so what happens is that the old leader receives a request to change the configuration from C old to C new, right? So number servers will change. So then a joint consensus is created called C old new. And uh, so this configuration is broadcast to all the servers. Once the C old new entry has been committed, which means a majority of the servers respect this joint configuration. So, so this is a special kind of majority, uh, which basically means, so, so uh, sorry, uh, I have not, uh, I withdraw the word majority. So all the servers in this case have to respect the joint configuration. So that is kind of simpler. Uh, so uh, if all the servers respect this joint configuration, then we go forward. So what is it that will happen in this case, which is uh, will happen in a special way? So we first start with the C old configuration. Then we go to C old new, which is a new joint configuration. And then we go to C new, which is a new configuration. So during this period, all the log entries are replicated in all the servers. 
So any server from C new or C old during this transition period can be elected as a leader. So for any commit, we need separate majorities in both the old and new configurations, which basically means that for sending any log entry, we need a majority in C old as well as a majority in C new. So this ensures that the new servers in C new get to see all the logs and also their logs get up to date over time. Uh, right, such that they can ultimately vote and win elections. So initially, they can be non-voting members where they will just be reading and recording the log entries. Gradually, when the logs start getting up to date, they will become voting members. After this, the leader sends a message to all the subscribers, all the servers uh, with CNU. So after this message is committed, a server from CNU is expected to start an election and win it. Uh, so, so this will happen if you can stop the servers from C old in uh, participating from the in the election. And uh, the reason it will win is because all the logs uh, till this message are expected to be committed. So that's the reason the candidate will become uh, will all the like the candidate will be eligible uh, because its logs will be at least as up to date as the rest of the servers. Uh, sorry, uh, and and then uh, the new configuration will, will take over, and the old servers. So basically, all the servers in C new. Sorry, all the servers in C old minus C new, which are essentially the servers that are not a part of the new configuration, they can be shut off. The other aspect is log compaction, which means that logs will keep growing over time. So when a log reaches a fixed size, what we can do is that we need not store the entire log, we can take a snapshot. So a snapshot is just a copy of the log, which can be stored in stable storage like a hard disk. We record the index and the term of the latest entry in the snapshot and we discard the logs from the servers. So servers can take snapshots independently and furthermore, uh, the snapshot can be used for another good purpose. So assume a follower is really behind a leader. So we have a follower, but the follower is really running behind a leader. So in this case, what the leader can do is the leader can simply send it a snapshot. It can read all the logs that it does not have and it can uh, add them in its all the log entries it does not have and it can then add them in its log. So let us now discuss the way that the clients interact with the raft system. So in this case, the client first contacts a randomly chosen server. The randomly chosen server returns it, the ID of the leader. The client then sends a request to the leader and gets the uh, and executes the, and sends the command so the command can either uh, the command will uh, be sent to the state machines either it can change the state which would be a write operation or it can read the current state which is a read operation so all distributed systems need a notion of correctness in this case we use the linearizability correctness condition which is stronger than sequential consistency so here the idea is that between the request and response of a command, it appears to execute instantaneously at some point in the middle. So this is stronger than sequential consistency and most distributed systems try to provide linearizability to some extent and so RAF does provide linearizability. So uh, to ensure the correctness of this and to ensure that uh, we have some idempotency of the commands. So of course the read can be issued uh, several times, but we will see that even that is that has complications. But definitely let's say if we send a write and the leader crashes, we don't get a response, we send a write once again, uh, then it should not be the case that uh, this actually becomes a second write. 
So let's say that we were implementing a key value store and we set x equal to 3 but the client is not sure if it went through or not and another client sets x equal to 5. Again the previous request is retried and we have x equal to 3. So this is not a linearizable execution, right? It's not appearing to happen at one instance. So what we do is that we assign a unique serial number to each command. So the client does that. To every command it assigns a unique serial number. The servers keep a record of the serial number and if they see a command once again, they simply respond to it without re-executing the request. So this ensures that if this request has actually gone through, uh, the serial number would be there with servers and they would quickly return the response. Read operations are difficult in this case because we want to provide the property of linearizability and also we are not writing anything to the log, we are just reading its state. So to read the state of the log uh, before executing a read only operation, the leader needs to ensure that it has at least committed a single message in the current term and it is still the leader. So being still the leader is important because that is the only way you can execute a request and committing a message in the current term means that all the messages in the previous term have all been handled, they have either been committed or they have been discarded. So whatever is the correct state of the log that is present with the leader in the current term. So it is in a position to actually execute the read request and the read request should always be on the committed state. So what do you have to do for a read again? Well, we will have to commit at least one message in the current term by the current leader and then execute a read on the state machine. So this concludes our discussion on the raft consensus protocol. So the raft consensus protocol similar to Paxos does not give us consensus all the time. This is of course according to the FLP result which says that it is impossible to do so. And for when does it not give us a result? When we cannot elect a leader, that is one of the cases when uh, we, are, we, we do not get uh, the, uh, we are not able to create a consensus. But however, we have safety properties in the sense it guarantees us that if something is agreed to, it is agreed to by a majority of the servers. It's, so, so there is a consensus and if there is any divergence, it can be rejected and it can be fixed. 